So I guess we're going to Whole Foods Market tonight, guys. Huh. Look for these logos in our aisles and save. They have value bonds. Anyways, hello YouTube. The purpose of this video here is, um, well, it's a supermarket tour. Um, for an assignment from my Sociology of Food and Eating class, we we're told to tour a supermarket and use a published reading called the Supermarket Tour to guide our analysis. Um, what we'll be looking for here is um, just uh, how the supermarket is laid out, why it's la laid out like that, and um, why certain prices are set up or sequenced in specific spots. Um, wow, they actually have a conventional... They have conventional tags. See, Whole Foods Market is... It's, it's known to be all organic and expensive but that I wasn't expecting that I was not expecting to see con uh, conventional pricing so pr conventional foods so foods that are not necessarily deemed organic so anyways we passed through the the produce aisle um, <clears throat> this wasn't my aisle of focus there's a couple aisles you could focus on you could focus on the produce center the fish market which is where we are right now the dry foods and cereal aisle which is what I focused on the hot foods area and the or the the checkout so <clears throat> we're actually passing through now just the um, they they cater to babies as well they cater for um, baby clothing and this is kind of like their their version of like the pharmacy whole baby and whole body so this yeah we're passing through where they have um, vitamins and I know the video is moving rather quickly, um, but you know when I stopped and looked at some of these vitamins, all of them said all of them said from natural sources. You know, so this is where I passed through the dry foods aisle, <clears throat> and part of the reading that I, I, I when I was reading the dry when I was reading about dry foods, um, the reading focused a lot on the corn and soybean agriculture. Um, agriculture industry so actually here's where I'm passing through the cereal aisle but corn and soybean agriculture and um, and GMO so uh, genetically modified uh, food processing and um, what I found quite interesting um, and I, I ended up looking a lot at these cereal boxes even the ones that were marked off organic I was looking a lot at these boxes to see if the points that I had taken out of the reading were really true. So, just a little background about corn and soybean agriculture. Um, according to the OPIRG reading, uh, the supermarket tour, um, corn and soybean are two products in all of our dry foods. So, if you look at the labeling for um, the the ingredients in most of our dry foods, you're going to find either a corn or corn byproduct, or soybean byproduct, or even the soybean itself. Um, <clears throat> it's dominating our agriculture and our grocery stores as to how many products it is found in. That's mainly because it's the most commonly grown crop. So in the, um, throughout the world, sugarcane uh, sits on the first tier, corn sits on the second tier, and soybeans sit on the third tier. Now in the United States, sugarcane is not really grown, so um, corn takes up takes that first place position at 50% of the entire United States um, grown crops. So half of all grown crops in the United States are corn. Um, and soybeans just follow very closely behind that. Now, the, according to the OPIRG, a quote that I took from this, um, from the portion about corn was that a price, the price of a bushel of corn is about a dollar less than the cost for to grow corn now despite that um, 90 sorry 85 percent of corn is considered GMO so it's genetically modified with 93 percent of soybeans being also genetically modified now 90 percent of all GMO uh, products turns out to be animal feed so if we're you see here, like we're, we're looking at organic goat milk now, right? And what this is going to claim is that there's no 
there's not supposed to be any GMOs in it, and that you know it's ethical how how it's how the um, animals are milked. But if animals, if it's in animal feed, it does pass down the food chain, right? So if you put GMOs, if you give animals GMO products to eat, it stays in their system. So then when we slaughter those animals, no matter how um, ethically or in, unfortunately in some cases unethically, we slaughter those animals, it passes down into our food. So even all of these cheeses, if any of those cows or goats or sheep or whichever animal was milked to make that cheese, if they had a GMO product in their, in their uh, feed, we're eating that and we, we're stomaching that in our system. So a little background about GMOs. So what are they? What are they really? Well, really, GMOs are genetically modified um, foods. Right? So to, modif- to genetically modify a food, you would isolate either a cell or a, a gene of that food isolate it and then manipulate it so you could either be adding in a gene like how in the OPIRG reading I learned that they do take the anti uh, freezing gene of some salmons and inject them in tomatoes right and GMO products tend to last a lot longer on the shelf when they should be spoiling they don't and they also tend to grow faster, grow larger. This sounds great, but it's not, it's artificial pretty much. It may seem real, but it's artificial. So, GMOs, uh, they follow the, um, they're they're illegal in in some countries to sell. Um, And when something's marked off as organic, usually it's non-GMO. And you'll find that on some of the products in the video and even in your local grocery store. I found a lot of these, like right now, looking at Buddha juice, it says raw, organic and real and it's true organic is real but organic means non-gmo now we can thank monsanto for that if you want to learn about why about monsanto there's other videos out there that you can refer to but just a basic rundown monsanto was a chemical company that pretty much decided to um start genetically modifying foods so and they created uh, glyphosate which is a herbicide, and it's found in Roundup, and they started using um, that herbicide on most of their, their plants, right? Therefore, that the plants would, you know, grow larger, grow faster. So anyway, so within these last two minutes, um, I mean, I, we learned a lot about GMOs and, and, and corn and soybean agriculturing, but within these last two minutes, I'm just going to run down just what is Whole Foods Market, right? So you're probably wondering, Akeem, why didn't you put that at the beginning of the video? Well, that's not what the video, you know, that's not what we're really going to be focusing on. But Whole Foods does play a huge role because they sell, most of their products are organic and they're committed to selling organic, which means that, yes, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But Whole Foods actually started out as a health food store in Austin, Texas, back in the 1980s. Today, Whole Foods Market has stores all across the United States, um, some stores in the United Kingdom and some stores in Canada. In the greater Toronto area, there are six stores. There are four stores in the city of Toronto, one store in the city of Markham, and the store that we are at tonight, uh, the one in the city of Mississauga. Now, Amazon is a parent company, and Whole Foods also has a sub-brand, like a subsidiary uh, store store lineup called the 365, named after their, their value brand. Um, <clears throat> the first Canadian store opened in Toronto back in 2002, with the first British store opening in West London in 2007. In terms of the 365 store, there are no stores outside of the United States, but they are millennial focused, more affordable. Um, you can visit the Whole Foods website um, to learn more about the 365 stores. But what one thing I notice about Whole Foods is that in terms of their dry foods, even their in-house brand, it really did li- live up to its value. It lived up to what was mentioned in OPIRJ article, um, the supermarket tour, where they mentioned that organic foods, um, well, some of them will will not have um, corn or, or soy products, right? Corn or soy products. So... And it was true. Like a lot of the cereals that I looked at, they did not. They didn't have that. They didn't have any soy products. They didn't have any corn products in them. 
um, most of them were made with natural wheat too. So um, it, it's, you know what, that's, it's, it's very good, good for Whole Foods that they're making the step to push forth and, and really make um, eating more of a healthy thing instead of, um, you know, packing our systems with GMOs. And you know what, props to them for that. So anyways, the tour was a lot longer than this, guys, but I had to chop it down to 10 minutes. So I hope you kind of enjoyed my tour of the Mississauga Whole Foods Market. Thanks for watching and see you next time.